in this video we're going to have a hands on experience on how the chromosomes and chromatids actually separate during the process of meiosis both meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 before meiosis 1 can begin the dna exists in the form of chromatin when the cell is in interface and as part of interface the dna is replicated within the cell in the s phase and that's what happens and you get an extra copy of chromatin now with this the cell decides to move ahead with meiosis 1 and in meiosis 1 specifically in the prophase 1 stage the chromatin begins to condense to form chromosomes and they look something like this so whatever chromatin was there has condensed to form chromosomes and each chromosome is made up of two sister chromatids attached at the centromere this white color thing you see here in the middle that is the centromere and the two sister chromatids are attached to each other at the centromere this is still one chromosome this is still one chromosome one and one chromosome so totally this cell has four chromosomes now what happens in the zygote stage is the homologous chromosomes begin to pair up and as we know homologous chromosomes are chromosomes that have genes in the same location and the genes may be different variations that could be alleles but the genes are located in the same location in both chromosomes so for this video blue and yellow are homologous chromosomes and green and red are homologous chromosomes so they begin to pair up and form a structure known as tetrad because 1 2 3 4 1 2 3 4 and when this tetrad is formed in the next stage which is packetine homologous chromosomes undergo chromosomal recombination or chromosomal crossing over while these two are sister chromatids this and this these two are non sister chromatids crossing over takes place between the non sister chromatids and you're going to have a crossing over product that looks something like this as packetin ends and as diplotin begins the chromosomes are connected only at the sites of crossing over which are known as chiasmata and as diakinesis progresses the homologous chromosomes fully separate like this wherever they were attached they separate and they form separate chromosomes like this so in metaphase what happens is the homologous chromosomes begin to align at the center of the cell which is known as the metaphase plate so this is the imaginary plate the metaphase plate and the chromosomes are aligned at the center of the cell now at this stage what happens is the centrosomes that begin radiating microtubules will come and attach at the centromere specifically at the kinetochore of each homologous chromosome and split the homologous chromosomes apart remember blue and yellow are homologous pair and green and red are homologous pair so on one side these two are going to separate and on the other side these two are going to separate so this happens in the anaphase stage the microtubules will pull the homologous chromosomes apart and split them into two cells in the telophase stage and cytokinesis so finally when cytokinesis happens this has become two cells and with this meiosis 1 ends as cytokinesis happens meiosis 1 has ended in meiosis 2 what's going to happen is the sister chromatids that make up these homologous chromosomes they are going to separate now the stages are the same as you know from the videos on meiosis 1 and meiosis 2 the names of the stages are same in prophase 2 the nuclear membrane that was surrounding the dna that begins to dissolve and in metaphase the homologous chromosomes arrange at the center of the cell if this is the center and if this is the center they begin to arrange at the center of the cell so now in metaphase they are fully arranged at the center of the cell and the microtubules come and attach at the kinetochore of each sister chromatid and as anaphase 2 happens the sister chromatids are going to be pulled apart like this the microtubules are going to pull the sister chromatids apart at the end of cytokinesis after telophase 2 you will have four haploid cells we started off with a cell that had these many chromosomes and now the chromatids have also separated to give four haploid cells and these four haploid cells are called gametes and when they fuse together the diploid nature of the cell is restored again for example if this is a gamete that's going to fuse with this gamete 
then remember these two are homologous chromosomes right so this is a homologous pair and this is a homologous pair with this the diploid nature of the cell is restored and that's about meiosis 1 and meiosis 2